Well, first of all, a star was born because, you know, Dan, I'm sure Danny told you the story. I don't know if he remembers how he told it. He told it on the Dinah Shore show and he told it many times that we uh, were together. But I guess he was down to his last $10 and his last clean shirt or something. And he, can I swear? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. All right. So he said that, you know, he's down to his last $10, his last clean shirt. He was a nervous wreck. He loved the character. His agent sent him in. He knew that this was like make or break. I think unemployment had run out or whatever. I've heard, you know, different things. But he walked into the, the whole room full of guys and he said, huh, before I begin, I just have one question. Who wrote this shit? And threw it down. And the guys laughed so hard. They knew that he was their Louie. And when he came down that cage, the first episode, you know, when he came down that cage like this, it, it, your, it's your view, and he comes out, he goes, Riga, 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 Riga. And he comes down that, and he goes, and you saw Danny, short to short, a star was born. That was it. I honestly believe that Danny was the only person who was completely, he was, you would not have had Taxi without a Louis de Palma. I think if any of us had left or whatever, you could still have that show, but you could not have lost Louis. He was the most memorable and indispensable character to Taxi. Why? Um, I think because he, he was so many contradictions. You know, he was, he was this devil and yet there was this heart inside of him. Uh, he had pathos, but he was disgusting. You know, I mean, he, when, when we did the scene about, uh, you know, where Louis goes too far, I th he won a, an Emmy for that, and where he's peeking in at me in the peephole in the girls' washroom. And uh, <laughs> I mean, he was so funny. We had such a great time doing that show. And he just tore, tears your heart, heart out every single time because he's disgusting. It's horrible. I get his job taken away from him. I get the National Organization of Women. He gets fired. He begs for his job back. And I say, have, you know, do you know why you, what, you, what you did wrong? He goes, you're not supposed to. And he said, no, have you ever been violated? And he says, oh, you mean, and he tells the story about being in the Husky department and having to buy clothes and the mother's laughing and pointing at him and the kids and everything. And he, the so, sound of corduroy. <laughs> You know that, and he was so. You know, it's like he said, "Is that how I made you feel?" Oh, I'm sorry. No, I says, "Yeah, kind of." And we hugged, and then of course, he's got to grab my ass. So the thing is that they always made sure that you could take Louis, you could tether Louis out in that emotional heart, you know, heart tugging way, but you always took him back to disgusting Louis, so that they were always starting at zero again for him. So he was just a fabulously written character and one that was. You know, I don't think anybody had ever seen anyone quite like Danny DeVito on in a character, you know, on television. It was the perfect blend between a character and an actor, or the perfect storm of those two elements coming together. Perfect part for the perfect character, for, perfect part for the perfect actor. And talk you know. a little bit about the uh, Louis Elaine relationship. Well, my very favorite episode is called Shut It Down, parts two, parts one and two. It was our the show uh, our last show before the Christmas season was going to start in um, in 1979. So this was we were shooting this December the 20, 21st. It was a Friday, and uh, as I said, they hated to lose anything from the script. So we start doing the show Monday, and they see it the Tuesday run through. They go, it's long, but it's so good. What are we going to do? And but we had to leave for Christmas. And they said, well, you know, because they didn't want to slop it over because they might have made it a two part and we shoot one one week and one the other. Well, we had to finish. So they said, well, we have an idea. And they were happy that it was Danny and me because we both were hard workers and also we were good at remembering lines and stuff. Anyway, we had to work twice as hard. But I went to his house and we learned the tango number. My absolute favorite, favorite, favorite scene that I did on Taxi was the negotiation scene. Because the cabbies are on strike, we're sick of the, the cabs that are uh, dangerous. Um, there's, we're trying to figure out who the shop steward is. Uh, there's so many great lines from Taxi that um, I use all the time in my life. Because we're saying, oh wait, is it this, is it that? We know we're going through all these different people that we think that it might be. Uh, no, he was the, you know, whatever. And Danny says, just what I was afraid of. They're getting organized, you know, because we were so disorganized. Anyway, so Tony becomes shop steward and Danny kind of says, hey, Paisan, invites him into the, 
into the cage and the two of me says oh we gotta go you know they've got a they've got a drink there that uh, the tide pool we, we've got a, a the drink there that your your skies won't call the monsoon right your skies won't clear for days and he says oh really well I don't know yeah we gotta go and he's there ringing the bell and they're like Bonnie okay I'll see you and he goes and Tony walks out and he goes I blew it, huh? He says, yeah, sorry, you're not shop steward. So I get elected shop steward because I'm like real feisty. So shop steward, we're on strike. We're all outside in the cold, everything else. So he calls me in and he wants to negotiate. So he says, okay, he says, well, what do you want? What do you want, Elaine? So, you know, I mean, are you going to show these things or whatever? I'm pretty sure that this is the dialogue, but whatever. Okay. So he calls me and he says, well, what do you want? And I give him the whole list. We want this, this, this. And he says, okay. Um, okay. All right. All right. You know, you and me, uh, I mean, he basically says, okay, you and me, uh, away, you know, with only the furry creatures to hear your ecstasy or something. And I say, no, he goes one day to save cabbies lives. Right. And I thought, I think, all right. So he, I come back and we negotiate. He says, I say, okay. And we start to do this walk. And it was so funny, I guess in your camera, so it went this way. Um, he says, I say, okay, it's, it's lunch. We sit at two separate tables. We do this. I bring a friend, you know, this and that. He goes, no. He says, let me just uh, change it a little. It's dinner. I pick you up, blah, blah, blah. And he basically says, and within earshot of at least uh, one or two people, you uh, must call me Stallion. And I say, no. Uh, I say, um, I say, no. Uh, he said, Every, everything except, he goes, especially Stallion. Every time Danny said Stallion, he would add something to it. Because I found Danny so adorable all the time that I would just laugh at him. So every time he'd say stallion, I would crack up, you know, and then just when I got used to it and kind of got my bearing so I could be mad at him, he'd add something. It went from like stallion to a snort, to his leg, to anything. He was constantly trying to crack me up. But I decided the night before we shot that episode that what I would do is wear the most painful shoes I owned to bed, leave them on, wear them in the show and I would have such a stomach ache that I would not laugh. And I did that. And if you notice that I actually ended up, we added a little piece later on and I had a different pair of shoes on because I didn't have them at the studio with me. But, um, so I go on the date with him and we end up doing this tango. We rehearsed it at his house on Wednesday night. We had it all down. And it, that to me is one of our funniest shows and certainly my most favorite moment, the negotiation scene from Shut It Down, parts mm -hmm. one and two. How does it resolve at the end? Uh, well, I go on the date with him and we actually kind of have a good time. And then he wants a little kiss and I give him a little kiss on the cheek and he pulls me down and we roll around and roll around and roll around. And then um, he, uh, we, I slam the door on him and he's kind of like, well, I had a good time, you know. And then uh, he leaves the little shrimp puffs or something, whatever <laughs> he's taking, the little like takeout uh, thing. But he was great. Danny, I loved I love Danny. I love him. We, we call, you know, Dan my confidant. He was always the confidant. He was the one, you know, you have to understand this cast loved one another so much that we not only went to work every day together, we watched the show together. We had all these parties. We were on a softball team together. We socialized as much as we possibly could. We went to each other's weddings, divorces, parents' funerals, you know, uh, uh, you know, kids christenings. We, we did everything that we possibly could do together for sure.